Hallelujah. Good morning. Good morning. Great morning to you all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless God. Hallelujah. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Bless you all. Ah, yeah. Yes, Lord. Good morning. Blessings, blessings, blessings. God bless you all. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Good morning. Let's like and share. Let's get our likes and shares done, and we're going to be ready to rock and roll in just a minute. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ah, Jesus. Yes, God bless you all, man. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Let me get my shares out. I'm sitting here and I'm not sharing. <laughs> God bless you. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Ah, Jesus. God, hallelujah, um, and I want you to uh, huh, say good morning to you, to our Impact Family, our Kingdom Agenda Fellowship friends, man, we're super excited about um, what God is doing in your life this morning, praise God for you, to all of our, our family who's online, um, all of our sons and daughters in ministry, um, um, and uh, and man, just, um, hmm, huh. Uh, I'm excited today. I'm really excited. Uh, today is Yom Kippur. It is the day that we, uh, as Christians, Messianic believers, celebrate the blood. Now, um, yeah, it does feel good to be in Montgomery in this morning. We we uh, want to say congratulations to the city of Montgomery. Um, we elected our first African-American mayor um, in the person of uh, Judge Stephen Reed. Um, and so we're excited um, about uh, his administration, I believe he's a very forward-thinking leader, and I believe he has a very diverse background. This is not just for black folk. Um, he is an African-American leader, which we, 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 we certainly acknowledge that, um, but I believe he's going to be a great leader for all the city of Montgomery, and I think it's going to take all of us pulling together um, to, to see the manifestation of all God wants to do under his administration. I know him to be a believer and I know many believers who supported his campaign. Um, and so we're excited um, that Montgomery went out and elected its first African-American mayor in the personhood of Judge Stephen Reed. So we say congratulations to not only the Reed family, but to the um, um, to the uh, city of Montgomery. Congratulations to the other candidates, um, Brother Arande, uh, Brother C.C. Cornelius Calhoun, um, and uh, what we believe will be Brother Larkin, 
um, um, after all the votes have been tallied. We thank God for all of them and the political process. Um, you know, we have to understand something about the political process. It is a kingdom. It is a governmental kingdom. God established government. Um, and so we want us to understand that it is our civic responsibility to participate in government. Um, it's not for everybody, but we must have Christian influence in government. So it's good to see um, believers be elected to offices and to be a part of the political process. So listen, we're excited. We're excited. We're excited about today's discussion. And I want to, I want to, um, um, man, um, I want to, I want to, 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 to talk this morning about something again. This is Yom Kippur. Um, it is the day of the blood. It is a day, um, 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 it is a day where we celebrate uh, the blood of Jesus as messianic or believers in the Messiah. We believe in Jesus the Christ. Now, today in Orthodox Judaism and conservative Judaism and, and, and a large portion of the Jewish world who are non-messianic, they will be celebrating the Day of Atonement. Again, the Atonement or Yom Kippur um, means the, the, the Day of Covering, Covering by the Blood. Amen. And we, we showed you yesterday, and just as a note, we want to note uh, Leviticus 23, verses 26 through 32. If you will do that for me, Minister Martha. Leviticus 23, verses 26 through 32. Um, we want to note that as the practice of the day of atonement. It's when the priest would go in and he would make sacrifices before the Lord on behalf of the sins of the people and watch this and the sins would be be, get, be forgiven would be forgiven uh for that year. And so we understand that in that in that atoning work when we atone for a thing, we cover it, we pay a price for it. Um and so we understand that the Yom Kippur is about that atonement. It's about making that peace between God and Israel. But we brought you over and we took you to the book of Hebrews, Hebrews, and we showed you how that, watch this, Christ then, the old system has been done away with, and Christ then becomes the atonement. Watch this. He becomes the atonement for us as believers. Um and, and, and so we understand this, that according to Hebrews 9, and I want to make sure we go back to Hebrews 9 to understand this, because we, we have to understand the mystery of transfer that God has translated through this process of reconciliation. He uses a different method. Watch this. Whereas in the Old Testament, in Luke 23, he used the blood of a goat, I mean, the blood of a lamb. Now he uses the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world, who is Christ himself. So in Hebrews 9, I told you to read Hebrews 9 yesterday. Um, and, and, and you've got to understand this, that this is, this is, this is heavy. And uh, when we look at Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 9, and I want to to look at the context of verse 23 through 28, and then we're going to come back and look at, look at Hebrews 10. Now watch this. I want to say that in light of, um, so, so let's make a note of a couple of verses real quick. And I want you to go ahead and plug all these in for me, Minister Martha. Hebrews 9, 23 through 28. Hebrews 9, 23 to 28. But I also want you to make a note. That's Hebrews 9, 23 through 28. <clears throat> but I also want us to make a note of Leviticus 16. Watch this. Leviticus 16, verses 5 through 14. Verses 5 through 14. And so let me let me look at the 5 through 14 just for a second. Because what I want you to understand is we've been talking about your fight is with the wrong man. The blood of Jesus has taken care of the sin nature in your life. And the sin that we commit now really, if we correctly appropriate the grace, the love, the mercy, and the justice of God, um, 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 then we can, we can learn to rise above our old nature. And what's happening is our old nature is staying alive and apparent because we're allowing it to breathe. Hallelujah. Now watch this. 
from Levit the book of Leviticus, the 16th chapter, Leviticus 16, 5 through 14. Leviticus 16, 5 through 14. Now let's look at this just for a second very, very quickly. I want to zone in on verses 8 and 10, but I want to look at Leviticus 16, 5 through 14. And, and, and what's, what, what I'm going to show you today really is going to be, it's going to have several implications. But one of the main implications is that the pulpit cannot be condemnation to the pew. Let me say this to you. Um, the pulpit cannot condemn the pew. Um, we've got to understand this. And likewise, the pew cannot condemn the pulpit. Now, let me, let me show you this real quick. We're talking about the Day of Atonement and the blood in this month of Tishri, 5780, the year of the mouth, the year of manifestation. So I want to help you change your whole perspective and quit being so sin focused that you can't focus on the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. Leviticus 16, 5 through 14. Let me begin to read very quickly. Watch this. And he now speaking of the priest. Speaking of the high priest, and he shall take of the congregation of the children of Israel, watch this, two kids of the goats for a sin offering. Now notice this specific offering, it's for a sin offering. Now there are many different offerings in the Old Testament Levitical system. There's a sin offering, there's a peace offering, there are all types of different offerings, there's a guilt offering. There's types of different offerings that the people would have to make based on, there's a trespass offering, I think it is. I'm trying to think about all the offerings under the Levitical system. But go back and look at the offerings under the Levitical system. This is specifically a sin offering. Now watch this. Why, why, why the sin offering? The sin offering, watch this, is for the removal of guilt. The purpose of the sin offering is to remove guilt. So, let, so let's talk with that in mind. We're talking about taking away the guilt of their actions for an entire year. And notice I put a term on it for a year because the Day of Atonement, the priest had to do this every year. So watch this. In verse 6, and Aaron shall make an offering. Offering what and Aaron shall offer his bullock of the sin offering. Watch this, which is for himself. So he had the first offer for himself, for his own sin for the year, before he could even qualify to make an offering for the people. Now we got this is why I say the pulpit cannot condemn the pew because we are subject to the same sin that the pew is, and this is why the pew can't condemn the pulpit. Because the pew stands between the pulpit and heaven. And you got to understand that. This gospel we preach is the good news of grace for all of us. And, and it's so disturbing how the church will look from pew to pulpit and pulpit to pew and draw these hard lines of argument and defense and attack against one another. We all need the grace of God. I'm off my soapbox now. He says, but he will first make a sin offering for himself to make atonement for himself. Watch this, and for his house. So that's him and the leadership, which in that time was the temple leadership. And he shall take the two goats and present them before the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And Aaron shall cast lots upon the two goats, one lot for the Lord and the other lot for the scapegoat. And Aaron shall bring the goat upon the shall bring the goat upon which the Lord's lot fell and offer him for a sin offering. So he's determining what are we gonna offer as a sacrifice to the Lord. But then remember there's two goats. Now verse 10 says, But the goat on which the lot fell to be the scapegoat shall be, shall be presented alive before the Lord to make an atonement with him. And watch this, and to let him go for a scapegoat into the wilderness. Now watch this. The, the Lord says, watch this. God, I need to read the rest of this very, very quickly. And Aaron shall bring the bullock for a sin offering, which is for himself, make an atonement for himself and for his house, and shall kill the bullock for the sin offering, which is for himself. And he shall take a censure full of coals and fire from the altar of the Lord, and his handful of sweet incense beaten small, and bring it within the veil. So now he's going 
as the high priest into the holy place on behalf of the people for the sins of the people. And he shall put the incense upon the fire of the Lord and the cloud of the incense may cover the mercy seat. Now, you know, the mercy seat is atop the Ark of the Covenant, uh, atop the Ark of Testimony, which contains those, those items that God told them to put inside the Ark of Covenant. Watch this. And he shall put the incense upon the fire of the Lord that the cloud of incense may cover the mercy seat that is upon the testimony that he die not. And he shall take the blood of the bullock and sprinkle it with his fingers upon the seat, uh, seat eastward. And before the mercy seat, he shall sprinkle of the blood with his fingers seven times. Now, let me let me get in this for a second. And then we're going to go to Hebrews 9. So watch this. God, God instructs them for the process of reconciliation, dealing with their sin. He says, bring me Aaron, high priest, two goats. I want you to take one goat that you're going to sacrifice and shed its blood for me to satisfy my wrath. Watch this. But the second goat is going to be released into the wilderness and he's going to watch this. He's going to be the scapegoat. He's going to symbolize, watch this, the scapegoat. He's going to symbolize, watch this, the removal or the sacrifice of the people's sin. So you're going to take this goat, one that you're going to shed blood for, for to satisfy my wrath. The other you're going to release into the wilderness and you're going to let this goat go. You're going to send him away from the congregation of the saints into the wilderness, which is an indication of the removal of the people's sin. Now, notice I told you this, that it's going to take this once a year. Aaron has to do this. Now, watch this. After you take the scapegoat and you send away the sins of the people, then you got to still come back and make another sacrifice Based on the mercy of God, you're going to bring in a bullock. You're going to make an atonement for yourself and for your household. And it's for the sins of the people. And you're going to sprinkle, watch this, the blood of that bullock on the mercy seat in an atmosphere of worship for the sake of move, the removal of the sins of the people. Now, notice this, all this they had to deal with once a year. On this day, the day of atonement. But watch this in Hebrews 9. Oh, Jesus. In Hebrews 9. Mm, in Hebrews Now notice this. And let me stress this point for you. One goat dies. The other goat lives and takes off with the sin. Please note this. One goat dies. The other goat takes the sin and runs away with the sin. Oh, God, you got to see this revelation. Watch this. Hebrews, now we're going to Hebrews 9, verse 23 through 28. And I know, I know this may, listen, I need you to understand your sin nature has been dealt with. But as long as we keep saying that it's ours, we're going to keep playing with it. But the blood. The blood. You need you need a hashtag today. The blood, the number four, M E. Blood. But well, let's go hashtag blood number four M E. Blood for me. Blood for me. That's our hashtag for the day. Blood for me. Hashtag B L O O D number four and M E. Blood for me. This is the day of atonement. And but watch this. Hebrews 9, 20 through 28. Now watch this. It was necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens should be purified with these. But the heavenly things themselves, which better were with better sacrifices than these. Watch this. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands. Now this is a direct reference to to the priesthood that Aaron just exercised behind the veil. Remember, he had to go into the mercy seat, which is on the box of testimony, the Ark of Covenant. So he had to go in physically. 
But the Bible says Christ didn't have, to, didn't have to go in physically. It's now spiritual. So it's not made with hands. He says, which figures are true, but into heaven itself now to appear in the presence of God for us. So watch this. Come on, people. Oh, please, I pray you get this. Just like Aaron went into the physical temple and brought that bull up, the sacrifice, and with it, he brought worship because the burning of the flesh and the incense, the smell, the sweet-smelling savor, the burning on the altar was an act of worship. The sprinkling of the blood was an act of atonement. He did that in the physical temple, but now... Jesus Christ is, is the presence of God for us. So what does he bring into the presence of God? He brings the same thing that the whole, that the, that the, that the high priest brought in Aaron. He brings worship and blood. Oh God. <coughs> he brings a sacrifice and the shedding of blood. Let me prove it to you. Verse 25, he says, Verse 24 says he's in the presence of God for us. Oh God. So just like Aaron stood for Israel, Christ stands for you and I. Oh God. You got to get this. Christ stands in the gap for you and I. So that when condemnation wants to come, he says, no, no, that one's mine. That one's mine. I paid for that already. I've sacrificed my life for that already. There is that far now no condemnation on them. Watch this. Oh God, I feel like shouting. I'm trying not to run through my den. Verse 25, nor yet that he should offer himself often. Notice this word often. Now remember I told you, watch this. I'm sorry, often. Let me read the rest of the verse so I can be clear. As the high priest entered into the holy place every year with the blood of others. Oh, Jesus. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now, once in the end of the world, had he prepared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. So watch this. Let Watch this. Christ, the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. Like Aaron would go into the old temple, he would make a blood sacrifice to the Lord of one lamb, of one goat. Now, now notice this, notice this, notice in Leviticus 16, it says goat and not lamb. Why goat? Because goat is an indication of rebellion. Goat is an indication of that which is anti-submitted. Goat is an indication of the bad nature. When you see a lamb, or I say lamb, you think docile. You think sheep. You think peaceful. When I say goat, you think horns. You think bucking. You think how a goat runs up to you and butts into you, or a ram. So it indicates rebellion or the sin nature. He says, I'm going to make one sacrifice by blood unto the Lord, and then I'm going to cause another goat to take on all this bad nature and run into the wilderness to take away the sins of the people. Hallelujah. But Christ, oh God, the lamb who would peacefully lay down his life for us before the foundation of the world agreed that I'm going to sacrifice myself to put away. Notice it says put away sin. So just like the scapegoat ran into the wilderness and took away the sins of the people in Israel for one year. Now Christ, oh God, through the sacrifice of his own flesh, being Jesus the Christ, has died and has taken away sin with the death of his flesh. But watch this. But he didn't just stay dead. He was resurrected and has taken our sin away. Oh, Jesus. Now watch this in verse 27 and 10, 28. <clears throat> and as it is appointed unto men once to die, and after this the judgment. Watch this. So Christ was, if you're reading with me in verse 28, Hebrews 9, he was once offered, once and for all. So now where the high priest Aaron had to go in every year, 
Now, because of Calvary, sin was dealt with, watch this, before you were ever born into time. There was a price paid for your sin because it was not about your individual action. It was about your sin nature. Oh God, he has paid the price by the blood for the sin nature. So, the, so watch this. He has given us now a Holy Spirit that gives us the power of choice. It gives us what the scripture calls exousia, the authority over sin to choose what we're going to do. Now, let me, let, me, let me challenge you with this. Let me challenge you with this. Let me challenge you with this. The sins we commit, we choose to do. You've chosen to stay mad. You've chosen not to forgive because the power to forgive resides in you. You've chosen to stay mad. You've chosen to embezzle money from your job because God said he'd supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. You chose to steal that money. You chose to fornicate. You chose to commit adultery. You chose to go buy things on credit that you couldn't afford. That was your choice. When you could have chosen the life of supply through Christ that says, I don't have to have the fanciest car. I don't have to have a BMW. I can just get there in a Hyundai. See, there's some things called choice that's killing us right now because we won't walk out the fact that we are free. But we allow public opinion, our souls, our emotions to keep us bound to things. You're free. You're free. I'm free. And what we have to do is fight the fight of faith. We got to have the faith to stand in who we are and what we know. You know, something happened yesterday. I was looking at some stuff on Facebook and watching political campaigns and stuff like that. Can I tell you this? That and, and this is something that came to my spirit. Conviction will often separate you from community, but you have to steal love out of a pure conscience. Let me say this. Conviction will often separate you from community, but you have to steal love out of a pure conscience. In other words, if you're going to stand on truth, it's not going to always be convenient. A lie is still a lie, no matter if the president or the pope tells it. Come on, somebody. A lie is still a lie, no matter if the president, the pope, or your pastor tells it. It's still a lie. Fornication is still fornication, no matter whether the president, the pope, or your pastor does it. Listen, there, there are some objective truths if we're going to live it by the word. The truth is not going to always be convenient but it will always be convicting. And if you stand on truth, you can rest assured you're not going to get pats on the back. You're not going to get tons of support. Watch this. If truth then becomes only relative to man's experience, then it becomes a populist, populist pro prop pro propaganda. It doesn't even mean anything anymore to say, I'm going to tell you the truth. Truth is, must be through the lens of Jesus the Christ. He says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And so we can watch this. We can pervert our love with a lie, or we can learn to watch this, lace our truth with love. We can pervert our love with a lie that says, oh, God just loves everybody. He does love everybody. That's a truth. But that does not mean he does not want to deal with your sin nature. So Christ was, was once offered to bear, watch this, the sins of many. And unto them that look for him shall he appear a second time, watch this, without sin and unto salvation. Oh, watch this. I got to get out of this. But you got to understand this. The priest had to go in once a year to give them a temporary fix for sin for 365 days or 300 and some odd days based on the lunar calendar. The days varied. 
because they were under Jewish time and season at that time. But Christ has gone in for you. He's before the presence of the Father now. And he has laid claim to you and he has dealt with your sin nature in the earth. What you going to do? Are you going to keep giving in to the thoughts, keep giving in to the deeds? Or are you going to begin to walk out by his grace that he has shown but that because of his love, he's given you grace and shown you mercy so that you can have the faith to walk out a new life? Listen, I love you. Stay up. Yom Kippur, the blood will do it. The blood will do it. And I haven't even really dealt with all of the blood that I, that I could deal with today. But just like the blood was sprinkled on the mercy seat, Christ has sprinkled the blood all over Calvary for your sin. Fight the good fight of faith. Keep believing that you're better. You're better than your old man. You've been delivered from your old man. You ain't got to walk around depressed. You don't have to walk around in fornication. You don't have to walk around in those things. You can be continually appropriating the grace of God to keep you day by day. We love you. Have a great day. Um, Mother Maud's going to pray now. But um, to my Facebook users, be inspired, be lifted, and let's go manifest. Mother Maud, if you will, please pray. Thank you, Lord God. Father, I come to you this morning thanking and praising you for another opportune time. You've allowed us to come before you. Thank you for the blood. Glory to God. Lord God, when we look back over our lives and see where you brought us from, glory to God, we thank you. Folks, I hope we're getting this. I really hope we're getting this. Um, he ain't got to keep, go you ain't got to keep dealing with this. You don't have to keep going back again and again, asking God for forgiveness for the same stuff. Let's start to change. Okay. Let's, let's start to manifest the righteous walk that God wants us to manifest. Listen, I love you. Stay up, stay woke, be inspired, be lifted. Let's go manifest. Uh, oh, don't forget to join us tomorrow. I mean, tomorrow night, Thursday night for Inspire PM with Pastor Leslie Timmons. Going to be another great session of teaching. I'm pretty sure it's going to be still dealing with identity. Um, so we're going to be super excited about that. And I'm dealing with identity likewise. We're, we're working together on this thing for you to understand who you are in Christ. Who you are in Christ. And then don't forget on Friday morning to uh, to join us for the, um, um, the Fresh Fire broadcast with um, Bishop Anthony Petway. Um, right here at 6 a.m. We love you all, man, and we're so excited for you. Um, let's have a blessed time. Oh, and don't forget, for our Facebook users, I Yom Kippur seed, we start to sow today. You can sow your $15 seed today. If you are 20 or above, you can cash app it um, through um, through our, 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 our Impact app. You can go to Push Pay in the Impact app. So Sow your $15 seed. For everyone that's in your household, $15 and above, just as a matter of honor for our, our Yom Kippur seed, and we'll sew that up until Sunday, okay? So we love you all. Thank you. God bless you. Yom Kippur seed, $15. Have a great day. We love you all.